This is a 10 gigahertz bandpass filter. Why would I want one of these? Well, to uh, help generate a nice clean signal at 10,368 megahertz to uh, become a reference for checking uh, receivers and things. Um, it's very easy to generate using a, uh, a PLL board like this one, which I have set to uh, working at 3,456 megahertz, which is one third of where we need to be. So um, what we do, we would put the, uh, the bandpass filter in line with the PLL and it would filter out the fundamental at uh, 3.4 gigs, just leaving us a nice clean output at 10 gigs and filtering off uh, everything else. These are very, very easy to make. You certainly don't need, need to be a licensed plumber to, uh, to be playing on 10 gigs. Um, if I can make this, um, anyone can. It consists of a bit of uh, double-sided circuit board, just an off-cut there, cut to the right size. These are copper end caps, or commonly referred to as pipe caps, which are available from your favourite uh, hardware store. I got these from Bunnings for $1.15 each. There are some M4 nuts and screws. The uh, bottom nut there you can see is soldered to the top of the end cap and the uh, second nut becomes becomes the locking nut. So once you've adjusted it, adjusted it uh, just to prevent the, um, the tuning from uh, moving. Um, under here we have some 085 rigid hardline. It's a rigid type coaxial cable. It's very, very easy to work with. The uh, inner dielectric is uh, Teflon, so it's virtually impossible to melt it. Unlike your uh, common RG58 type cables you'd use at HF, this, uh, this stuff's almost idiot proof to work with. Uh, on one end we've got a male SMA connector, and on the other we've got a female SMA jack, so it becomes an inline device. Uh, you can see the 085 is soldered on this side of the, the circuit board, but also more importantly it's soldered on the other side of the circuit board. I really should have taken a picture of it before I soldered the caps on. And uh, the inner part of the coax extends 3 millimeters up, so it becomes the probe. So 3 mils up on all of these, so we get our coupling from here to here, one side of the filter, and from here to here on the, uh, across the other filter. Insertion loss is about 6 dB. I'm, I'm very, very happy with that. Tuning is uh, reasonably critical. It just takes a, a little bit of tweaking uh, to get it spot on. Uh, but you tune one up for maximum output, then tune the other and, and, and so forth, and uh, you'll get it there. Uh, it completely kills the, uh, the fundamental at uh, 3,456 megs, so I'm very happy about that. You certainly don't need a spectrum analyzer to, uh, to set these things up. They do help, of course, but uh, um, a, a microwave watt meter uh, you can use, or even a very simple uh, diode detector feeding a, uh, a meter. They're very effective as well, and there are plenty of designs out there on the internet. So that's it, a 10 gig bandpass filter. Very easy to make, costing just under $10, so not expensive at all, and uh, lots of fun to make. There's about a dozen 10 gig operators in Brisbane, and that number is growing, so if you're interested in this stuff, but not quite sure where to start, give one of us a call, we'd be happy to help. You could always tag along and see what goes on at one of our microwave activity days too. Lots of fun there.